That's as close as I want to get to it. Tom Magritte, you have a handful of rattlesnake. That's true. Now this would probably freak a lot of people out. Um, just that noise, hold it up next to your... Sure. You get a sense of that. It is quite loud in person. Uh, this is a male. Yep. And how, how many rattlesnake species are there in Kentucky? Well, there's actually two species of rattlesnakes in Kentucky, uh, we think. We believe that there are still pygmy rattlesnakes in land between the lakes, but they're very uncommon and, and you'd be very lucky to come across one, or maybe unlucky as some people might say. The timber rattlesnake is by far the most common snake in Kentucky. It's very common in the eastern mountains, um, southern Kentucky, and also in parts of western Kentucky, but it's pretty much absent in the, in the bluegrass, inner and outer bluegrass, and down near the swamps. Now, let's talk about what we're doing out here. Obviously, you're with UK, correct? correct? Yep, University of Kentucky, you're Department doing a study. of Forestry. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing? Are you tracking these snakes? Yeah, I really right. hope to see uh, what these snakes are doing in the Cumberland Plateau. It's uh, an area where they haven't really been studied. They've been studied in other parts of their range, but we find their behavior differs a lot based on the topography and on the climate. Mm -hmm. And so here we've actually found that they don't den in these large numbers that you see in the northern parts of their range. They den pretty much individually in these little sandstone ledges uh, throughout eastern Kentucky. And some of these spots you would walk past and you would never think it was a snake den, and yet you have something like this crawling inside of there uh, every October. So that's one important part. We're hoping to characterize the hibernacula out here because that's really an important part of their life cycle and an important part uh, to know for the management of this species. Well, I guess we've seen this guy. Now let's, uh, let's go take a walk up in the woods and see if we can find this one. Sounds good. We've seen a lot over the years of uh, tracking equipment, everything from fish to elk to all kinds sure. of critters, but it's the same technology. Oh, exact same technology, yeah. Like you said, this has been used for years for tracking just about anything that moves. It's very difficult to track snakes, though, with this because you can't put a radio collar on a snake, sure. obviously. And uh, anything glued to the back of them, you know, they shed their skin. So until they developed the technology to implant the transmitters, uh, this was pretty much useless. But now we can actually use it, we can turn it on, adjust it to the right frequency where our transmitter is at. You can probably even hear a little, a little ping, a little ping noise. That's our snake. He's right down this hill. Let's go find it. Sure. Now what's the attraction of snakes? Why snakes? Well, I like snakes. <laughs> We're uh, taking these snakes after we catch them to a veterinarian and he implants a uh, radio transmitter within the snake's body cavity. So we're gonna go right here at the interface of the chutes and the scales, and we're gonna go in between a couple of ribs here. Obviously, they've got a lot of ribs. I just have to make it just big enough to get this transmitter in. But I'm gonna run this urinary catheter under the skin, and then I'm gonna feed the antenna So now we'll sew him up, so they're back to their habitat where they're familiar, and she'll go live a happy life. And Tom will be able to find out what she's doing. Yeah, he's real close. That's the problem, man. You can get to about 20 feet away from him, and then the signal's so strong you can't tell, and you just gotta sit there and look at all the leaf piles. Several times where I'm tracking them in between my feet, you know? I see him, I see him. It's easy when they're dark like that. That snake, he knows we're here. He can Absolutely, yeah. At what point, how close do you have to get before he reacts to your presence? He would just as soon lay there motionless, not uh, expending any ener energy at all. Mm -hmm. he, until someone walks by, he wants to eat. Mm -hmm. But at what point, how close do you have to get to him before he shows uh, I would have to get, experiment for us? well, okay. yeah, I could. It's, it's sort of an odd day because it's so cool, and uh, I want people to get the wrong impression. When it's hotter, I mean, he will, he will definitely move. But yeah, we can, uh, we can check it out. So I have a signal right here. Yep, very strong. And I mean, 
just to demonstrate how calm these snakes are and how docile. He knows I'm here, he just wants to remain hidden. He doesn't want any business with us. And if you just leave him here and don't fool with him, he'll be fine, not even gonna move. It makes you think how many of these you walk past in the woods while you're out hunting and fishing. He just wants us to leave him alone, really. Simple as that. Now, what is their typical home range? Well, you'd find these snakes most often in south and west facing slopes of hillsides in rocky areas, areas that are open, maybe an area where a storm blew down trees or they did some logging. And the female snakes tend to kind of stay put most of the year. The males are the ones that really travel far and kind of seek out the females to mate with. Now, how about that? Here they are. So that's just more of a warning sound. Mm-hmm. Yep. We know what they are. They know what we are, you know, just <laughs> keep our distance. They got pretty much everything. Mice are going to be crawling around, working their way under oh, here. Chipmunks all over this log pile here. Yeah. <clears throat> so they Perfect. got just about everything they need. So Perfect if, habitat. So if, if they have what they need, mm -hmm. there's no reason for them to, them to stray too far. Oh, why not? Yeah. Do those both have transmitters in them? Yep, they both do. And that transmitter emits a signal that's readable for about a mile or two. And we can track the snake pretty much wherever it goes throughout its active season, all the way to its hibernacula um, where it spends the winter time. Now, Tom, at the end of your study, I don't know how long your study will be going on in this particular project. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Oh, probably for the next several years, I'd say. We're hoping to publish uh, scientific articles based on our research here. You know, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but that, that is a beautiful animal. I think they're beautiful, too. And I mean, you can see we're just a few feet away from them, and they have no interest in us at all. No, they would rather we put this down and walk away, but they're not going to come after us. Oh, no. They're staying away from us. They're just like, okay, I wish that was back down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thanks for letting us take a peek on you. We're going to let you get back around your business. Mm -hmm. The truth is, I mean, who knows how many of those you walk past yeah. and just never. I'll bet it's, based on what I've been looking at out here, it's probably a lot. <laughs>